Following its second closed beta, Wuthering Waves was subject to some pretty harsh criticism. But just days after the test ended, the developer released a statement addressing players' greatest fears. To begin with, Kura Games is going to optimize the combat overall. They'll focus on revamping the sound effects of weapon hit feedback, echo skills, resonance skills, and other battle aspects. In addition, they'll improve jumping by adjusting animation speed, camera transitions, and landing feedback to make it feel more natural. Playtesters agreed that certain characters just weren't up to snuff. To address this, Lingyang and Jianxin's movesets will be adjusted for an elevated overall combat experience, which is great because Lingyang's aerial attacks are pretty hard to control, and Jianxin just needs a little more oomph. They'll also adjust Verena's HP restoration mechanism so she can use her photosynthesis energy more efficiently. Hopefully whatever they do with her makes her not feel like a 3 star anymore. Here's the big one. They're going to improve Kalkaro's kit, and in doing so, make it so that his extra intro skill, necessary means, will be available by default. This means you no longer need three copies of Kalkaro in order to get this beautiful animation. Thank God. This is big because it removes a terrible precedent set that would have ensured we would be missing out on huge parts of characters' kits without spending lots of money. Now, if you get Kalkaro, he's just gonna be cool. Withering Waves will also introduce a series of new combat practicing dungeons where you can better familiarize yourself with each character's unique combat mechanisms and practice how to combo. The tutorials for each character in-game were okay, but I'm especially interested in how they'll show us how to combo things. Will they show some cool ways to use characters together? In the dev message, they say they have also started working on other frequently reported issues such as bad camera experiences, frequent lock-on loss, enemies quitting combat, and counter-attack failures. Again, these were all really, really big issues in the second closed beta test that we expected to be fixed, but it's really good to hear that assurance that they will be. The lock-on was just awful, and I can't tell you how many times I had to kill this bear because it kept running out of its aggro range and fully restoring its HP. Then we move on to the gameplay. The big one is the Echo system, and Kuro Games made sure to address that thoroughly. During the second closed beta test, Echoes were one of the most awkward things to deal with. It was really difficult to farm them because of their spawn rates and the chance that they would drop. They had way too huge a range of substats. Getting excess echoes that weren't very valuable was pretty much useless because you couldn't do anything with extra echoes. You couldn't sell them, you couldn't dismantle them in some way, and worst of all, you couldn't even mass release them, so you had to get rid of them one by one, and you would get so many purple rarity echoes, even when you had the gold rarity unlocked. It was just awful. And so the developers acknowledged concerns about how the echo hunting experience was too grindy, the game lacked disposal options for unwanted echoes, and other issues. They promised to make a number of changes to help make this better. It'll be easier to obtain various echoes, and echoes will be made available by participating in in-game events, completing daily activities, and other means. Thankfully, you'll be able to recycle unenhanced echoes by converting them into random new echoes of a type you have unlocked. It's not hard to unlock a type of Echo, so this is awesome. This is so good. It just felt like such a waste to get extra before. Instead of suffering with how few Echo tuners you got, going forward, when you use tuned Echoes to upgrade other Echoes, a designated percentage of tuners you previously used will be returned. So even if they keep the system of not showing the extra stats before you tune your Echo, at least you'll get something back after tuning them. Here's a big one for people fearing the layers of RNG. They're going to raise the minimum numbers you can get with substats re-rolling and narrow the range of possible rolling results. The range was just awful before, and this is big. All these number issues really make me wonder if Kuro just didn't have any time to adjust numbers properly going into CBT2 because they had to make such huge adjustments to the story and characters and models and everything. But that's just speculation. Luckily for me, they're also going to optimize the auto-equip function of Echoes. It was really bad before. It never gave you anything you even vaguely would want. There's still no word on Echo loadouts, and I really hope they get added to the game at some point soon. As of the second closed beta, swapping Echoes is a huge pain. But there's more good news. Pretty much everyone expected that you could just transform into Inferno Rider and drive around the place, and everyone was really sad that you couldn't. But the devs have confirmed that Inferno Rider will get a new transformation mode. 
When equipped, you can transform into the Inferno Rider, which they typoed as Infernal Rider. That's ironic because of one of the points we're gonna talk about soon. They've promised to develop new events and new gameplay centered around Echoes and improve them based on feedback to create unique experiences. It would be cool to see how Echoes can be integrated with the world better. Depths of Elusive Realm is a roguelite game mode, and it's honestly really fun. It was one of my favorite things about Closed Beta 2. There will be a new tutorial stage for Depths of Elusive Realm to help beginners better understand and enjoy this gameplay. Only a handful of characters can be played there before, each with their own unique upgrades and everything else. But in the full release, there will be more playable characters. And thankfully, you'll be able to use trial characters as well, which was not available in CBT2. You pretty much just couldn't play if you didn't have that character leveled, and you couldn't play as a character at all if you didn't get them from the gacha. For example, Gion was a playable character in Depths of Elusive Realm, but if you didn't actually own Gion yourself, you'd just never get to play him there. I hope that when they say there will be trial characters, that includes the characters you don't own. Also, they spell Depths like this. Anyway, they'll also add high difficulty events and special boss mechanisms, and hopefully that will be a fun challenge. But the game was full of other little annoyances, and the devs wanted to reassure us about those too. Going forward, drops from supply chests or enemies in the wild will be automatically picked up. No more mashing the F key, no more holding down the F key, we're saved. This was actually an extra big problem in Withering Ways because the drops had physics, so they would roll down cliffs. <laughs> The amount of times I had to go and chase a loot drop. You have no idea how glad I am I'll never have to do that again. Co-op mode will be available sooner at a lower union level. Also really huge, it was not available until union level 30, which was a lot of hours into the game. Everyone wants to just get into a game with their friends as soon as possible, so putting that off so late was really strange, but I'm super glad they're changing that. There will also be a batch salvaging option for unwanted items in your backpack. Hopefully this includes Echoes because they also get shoved in your backpack and that's how you had to go and remove them. This is great. On to the story cutscenes and animations. There are some miscellaneous things they're going to be improving such as strange camera positionings, characters showing up at the wrong time, poorly matched lip animations, and a lack of detail in story sound effects. There were some extremely jarring times where some huge creature would crash in and then there was no sound at all. <laughs> it definitely felt unfinished. Characters going forward will have improved lip animation and eye blink animations. They say they've adjusted and rearranged the story quest progression for a smoother flow and changed the unlock prerequisites for some story quests. The first few hours of CBT2's story was extremely boring. It was dull. It was very poorly paced, and I hope, I hope that is exactly what they're talking about here. Way, way, way too much exposition. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. They've reworked the sound effects and cutscenes for better performance and improved the skip function to make it work better. Or at all, in some cases. The devs insist that they'll keep polishing every detail of story, cutscenes, and animations to optimize the quality. That's great. It's already looking pretty good, but it just needs to feel better. There are some other issues Kura Games will be addressing, such as crashes, blank screens, frame drops, and devices overheating. They say that improving game performance on all devices is a top priority. There's a small line here about improving the character and environment designs and adjusting the UI for easier navigation. I just want to emphasize that real quick because that means that there could still be adjustments to character designs and appearances, as well as the way the world looks. The game is already extremely beautiful, and I'm excited to see it when it fully releases. Kuro Games notes that they take localization quality very seriously, but maybe not seriously enough to get Inferno Rider's name right. They say they'll continuously improve the localization quality based on feedback, and they're working on adding English, Japanese, and Korean voiceovers for story and character voice lines. Well, all I can say is I hope the localization quality is good before the voice lines are added in because Kuro Games does not have a good track record with that. Another day, another progress. All that aside, the things that Kuro Games has addressed in this developer message pretty much cover all the major issues that any playtester had with closed beta 2 of Withering Waves. 
What's really shocking is how quickly this message was put out. They want to reassure us that they are listening to our feedback. But the most important piece of feedback I could leave is, please let us turn off the UI anytime. This game is so pretty, let us show people. But if you want to find out how characters were in the second closed beta, you'll have to check out this video.